This is the first video in Secondary Math 1, and this unit happens to be about equations and calculator skills. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this uh, first section. This is 01, section 01, the I can statement is I can use a graphing calculator and the order of operations. So we're going to go ahead and write down graphing calculator right here. So let's put the word graphing here and the order of operations, order of operations. So we're going to look at the warm-up. There are four parts to this. It says do the following without a calculator. So definitely without a calculator here. And be prepared to explain your answers and how you got those. So let's take a look at this right here. I'm just going to go through this and assume that we've got a pretty good handle on this. We're going to do the multiplication first here. So this is going to be 5 plus 8. Then we're going to add those together. We're going to get 13. Always a good idea to show your work and then circle the answer when you're done so everybody knows what you think the answer is. You'll notice that we've got a set of parentheses here. So even though we've got the same numbers, we're going to have to do the slightly differently. We're going to add those together and then we're going to multiply by 2. Notice that I changed to implied multiplication here. Answer on this one is 18. Uh, these two problems right here, C is negative 10 squared and D is negative 10 quantity squared. So the way we do this one right here is this literally means negative 10 times 10. So we end up with negative 100 on that one. And then this one, because this is in parentheses, this means negative 10 times negative 10. Negative times negative is a positive. So we end up with positive 100 on that one right there. Now, um, when people talk about doing the math, what they usually think of is they think of doing adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, and maybe they think of doing exponents. So let's talk really quickly and remind ourselves about the, the symbols that we'd use to represent each one of these. Of course, with addition, we use a plus sign. Um, we make that look a little bit better there. So we use a plus sign there. We use a subtraction sign. Now it's going to be a big deal that we're clear on the difference between a subtraction sign on the calculator and a negative. In reality, when we use these, it's pretty clear when in, in context which one it is. With multiplication, we're going to use a dot or a set of parentheses. This implied multiplication like I used right there is a good one. Using an x like that, generally not a good idea once, to, once we get to this level of math. And when we divide, we almost exclusively represent that with a horizontal fraction bar. So we'd have a number on the top and we'd have a number on the bottom or a variable or so forth, but we use a horizontal fraction bar. Um, we can use this right here, that typical symbol that you see in elementary school, but we typically do not do that in uh, once we get past here. You will see that occasionally though. And then we've got an exponent. Uh, say we have something like this, two to the third. Um, we might represent that with a little caret key and we're, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit more later on. So when we see these operations, we've got to know which one we're going to do first so that we can all get the same answer, we can all get it correct, and we can do it the right way all the time. So there are two common mnemonic devices. These are memory devices. One of them is the phrase, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and the other one is the word PEMDAS. It's an acronym. So I'm going to go ahead and write down PEMDAS, and you probably are familiar with that. This is parentheses, then exponents, multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction in the order that we come to them. So I'm going to put a set of parentheses here. I'm going to put an exponent right there. Um, this is multiplication and division. I'm going to go ahead and use that symbol so that we're perfectly clear. And we do those in the order that they come uh, left to right. Multiplication is not more important than division just because it comes first in this little acronym. Or over here, my comes before dear. Doesn't mean we always do multiplication first then division. We do them in the order that we come to them from left to right. And then the same thing with addition and subtraction. We do those in the order that we come to them uh, from left to right. Let me fix that right there. So from left to right. Boy, that looks horrible there. Okay. All right. So from left to right. Now we're going to be using a lot of expressions that have fractions and decimals. So let's go ahead and write decimals right here. And we're going to be doing this all year in equations, expressions, all sorts of stuff. So we need to be able to use our calculator effectively with these type of numbers so that we get the correct answer. Now I've got a handout for this. You've probably got this supplement with you. If not, go ahead and pull it up right now, download it, print it, whatever you need to. And we're going to take a look at the buttons that we're going to use most often. So we're going to, we're going to come back to that set of notes in just a second, but we're going to take a look right here. So if we're going to be using a TI-84 graphing calculator, now there are lots of different models, but they all basically do the same thing. We're going to be using a TI uh, pretty exclusively here. Um, I'm going to pull up a TI-83 sometimes, a TI-84 sometimes, most of the time a TI-84, but this is the basic idea. So first thing we want to know is um, a calculator is a tool. So let's write the word tool right here. A calculator is a tool. It is not a crutch and it does not have a brain. So you're the one that's got to provide the brain power. You've got to provide the brain power. Um, if you put the wrong thing in, 
you are going to get the wrong thing out. I don't ever want to have somebody come up to me and say, hey, well, my calculator said that was the right answer. Well, if you put it in wrong, you're going to get the wrong answer. It doesn't matter um, uh, you know, how smart the calculator is or whatever. So like all tools, it's important to know how to use it correctly and know its limits. Know what it can do and know what it can't do. Know where the pitfalls are and things like that. So I'm going to shrink this down and we're going to take a look at this and um, take a look at these a couple of these common keys right here. So I'm gonna start right here on the second key and I'm gonna go uh, counterclockwise here. So the second key is right here um, and notice that they're color coded. Yours might be a slightly different color. On this one, um, it happens to be blue. Um, the second key is used to access all of the second function keys. Any of those blue functions above each one of those buttons, uh, whether it's up here on this menu right here or down below, we have to hit the second key first. There's another button here, it's the mode, and quit is above there. So if you ever find yourself in a screen where you, you can't get out of it, second quit is what will get you there, second mode. Okay, the alpha button allows you to access any of the green functions of each one of these. Alpha, because a lot of the second functions of these are letters. Um, most of the time we're gonna be using this to access the function menu, or sorry, the fraction menu uh, that's done with the Y equals, and I'll show you how that works in just a second. Um, let's see, uh, make sure you know the difference between these two buttons right here. This is the act of subtracting, the operation of uh, subtracting, subtracting something. And this one right here is negative, making something the opposite of what it used to be. The calculator differentiates between those a little bit more than we do when we write these, so you've got to be aware of that. Um, we've got the enter button, the equals button right here, and then you've also got above here in blue, so you'd have to hit second enter to access the entry. That's what uh, does deep recall. It'll allow you to recall previous commands. Very helpful if you've got some really long, complicated entries. Um, you can also, on a T84, you can also just use the up arrows and the enter key to grab whatever you've uh, typed in previously. Uh, next one I want to take a look at is the memory button. Um, it's above the plus, so we hit second plus for memory. It allows you to reset things back to factory settings. So if somebody used the calculator before you, it's acting weird, something's not working right, you can always reset it. And to reset it, you're going to hit second, and then you're going to hit the plus button, that's memory, and then uh, menu seven, then menu one, then menu two. Um, and we'll probably go through and do this really quickly. Uh, parentheses are right here. They're above the eight and nine key. A lot of people lose track of those. The clear button, that'll clear off a line or an entire screen if you hit it twice. We've got the delete key to delete whatever the cursor's on. And we've also got an insert. That will allow you, allow you to, if you've got a big long command, kind of uh, jump in the middle of it, put something in there, and then push everything uh, further down the road. Um, and then of course right here we're going to be using this. Um, this is the F1 button, so we get this by doing alpha and Y equals. Alpha Y equals gives us F1. That's uh, used to enter fractions. And then of course the Y equals button right here, you may have used that before when you're graphing, and we'll probably do a little bit of experimenting with that. So let's flip over to the next page. And let's talk about a couple of things on there. And on this one, again, alpha y equals. So alpha y equals is going to bring up the function, uh, excuse me, the fraction menu. And so these are the four things that you can do on the fraction menu. The first one, number one, allows you to enter a regular old fraction. It'll put a horizontal fraction bar. Number two will allow you to enter a mixed number. Number three will allow you to change from a, a fraction to a mixed number and vice versa. So it'll go, go from an improper fraction to a mixed number and back and forth. And it knows which one you've got, so it'll just obviously do the other one. And then the fraction decimal conversion, there's another way to do this that I'll show you. So if you put in a fraction, it'll change it to a decimal. If you put in a decimal, it'll change it to a fraction. Um, and then this one right here is the exponent key. It's called a caret key. Um, and again, big difference between these two expressions right here, negative five squared and negative five quantity squared. Got to make sure that you use parentheses there. So keep that in mind. Um, the answer key, um, that's above the negative. So you'd hit second and negative in order to recall that. That's really nice when you've got a big, long, ugly number that you, you don't want to type in again, but it was the last thing that you typed in or the last answer the calculator created. Um, you can use that again by just hitting one of the operation keys over here. Uh, there's a comma key right here above the seven. The square and the square root button, those are right here. The variable key, that's right here. It's got an X, a T, a theta, and an N. We're gonna use it as an X most of the time, and that's gonna be somewhere down the road in this class. And then of course the math button right here, there's a whole bunch of useful stuff in there. There are several soft menus there. 
um, that you can access. So uh, keep this reference nearby. Um, you're going to get to a point if you use these often enough. You, I mean, it's not even you, you're not even thinking, oh, where was that button? You'll do that for a while, but once you get used to it, you're really going to be using these uh, really quickly. You won't even be thinking about it anymore. So we're going to come back over here. Um, and just to remind ourselves, we should not rely solely on the calculator to find answers for us. It's a really good idea if you've got some general idea of what the answer is going to be. Is it going to be big? Is it going to be small? Is it going to be positive or negative? Different things like that. That's going to help us know if we've put something in the calculator the wrong way. Because remember, if you put it in the wrong way, you're going to get the wrong answer. So here's what we're going to do. So I've pulled the calculator up. I think we're ready to go now. Just to make sure we're in good shape, I'm going to go ahead and hit second right here and then memory. Um, we're going to reset, so I'm going to hit seven. I want to reset all the RAM, and it'll ask me if I'm sure that I want to do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say yes, and you'll notice that it's cleared everything off here. I'm going to clear that off by hitting the clear button, and then I'm going to go ahead and type this in. So I'm going to do 5 plus 4, and then I'm going to do times 2. And you'll notice it uses the asterisk a little better than the X there. Go ahead and hit enter. We got 13, so we're in good shape. Uh, parentheses, here we go. So 5 plus 4, close the parentheses, then we're going to times that by 2. Hit enter, we got the 18, so we're in good shape there. Let's go ahead and hit the negative. Now, again, this is a negative, not a minus, so we're gonna do a negative, then we've got a 10, and we're gonna square this, so here's the caret key right there. And we're gonna do an exponent of two. And notice how you've got some really pretty print. Um, it used to be that they had, you actually saw a little caret figure like this. Um, I always like to hop down underneath there, uh, make sure that this looks like what we have on our, on our paper. Hit enter, we've got negative 100, so we're in good shape there. And again, we've got to use the parentheses on this one, so there's our negative 10. We'll close the parentheses. We'll raise that to the second power. Um, some of you might remember that since we've got a, we're squaring here, you could also just hit the square button right here. I'll do that again in just a second right here, but you'll notice that we got 100. So we did get all of those right. Um, I am going to type this one in. I'll, I'm just going to do, uh, well, let's, let, me, let me clear this whole thing off. I'm going to do negative 10 and then I'm going to hit the square button right here. And you'll notice that square button, instead of hitting two keys to make the square, we just hit the one because that's such a common function. So I'll hit enter, and there we go. All right, so we're in good shape here. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that off. I'm going to come back over here, and we're going to remind ourselves of a couple of words. So we've already confirmed the, the stuff in the warm-up. Um, but if somebody says we're working with rational numbers, that's a really fancy way of saying we're going to be working with numbers that can be written as fractions. So write the word fractions right here. Numbers that can be written as fractions. So decimals that terminate or have a repeating pattern, so write the word repeating, or have a repeating pattern, those are also rational because they can be turned into a fraction. And you might remember doing that uh, in your eighth grade class. So our calculator can make this really easy to change from one form to the other, and this is really pretty awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in right here, and I'm gonna do these a couple different ways. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and type this in as a fraction to start off with. So I'm going to type in alpha y equals. It's going to bring up the fraction menu. I'm going to go ahead and put the negative 9 on the top. And again, remember, there are three places you can put that negative on a, a negative fraction out front, on top, or on the bottom. Top or, or front are usually the best. I'm going to put a 6. Hop outside, make sure that that looks right. Hit enter, and there we go. So the answer on this one is negative 2 thirds. So, sorry, negative three halves. So negative three halves right there. You could also do this. So take a look at this. I'm gonna do negative nine and I'm gonna divide it by six. I've got negative 1.5, which we know is the same as negative three halves. So I'm gonna hit the math button and right here, it's gonna change to a fraction. So we've got number one under math. Uh, again, math button right here. Number one is changed to a fraction. Number two is changed to a decimal. Um, so we'll hit enter right there. And there's our negative 3 halves. So we're all set to go on that one. Um, this one right here says convert each fraction to a decimal and each decimal to a fraction. Oh, hey, gosh, this was a fraction. We need to change that to a decimal. So that actually was the answer. That's what we wanted to keep here. Always nice to pay attention to those instructions. So this is negative 1.5. All right, let's take a look at this one right here. Negative 5 divided by 7. And the good thing about this is it's going to go ahead and change that to a decimal. Um, that's kind of the default. Um, when we put in a, a division problem, it will write it down as a, as a decimal rather than as a fraction. So we're going to round this to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to call this um, negative 0.71. Um, 
and we're going to go ahead and leave that. If you wanted to, you could put the little approximately equal to sign. And then you'll notice here, this uh, sevenths are really ugly. They repeat, I think, every seven digits or something like that. You can see the 142, 143. The reason this is a three, you might recall this, is because this would have been a two, then an eight would be the next digit off the screen. So it's going to bump that up. It's going to round that up. And then we've got this three and a fourth. This is a fraction, so we want to write it as a decimal. You might already know what it is. But I'm going to go ahead and type it in this way. Um, I'm going to do alpha y equals. Uh, we've got a mixed number, so we're going to do a 2. Um, so we're going to do 3 and 1. Put it on the bottom. That's a 4. Hop out here. Make sure that we've written it right. Changes it to a um, mixed number, sorry, an improper fraction. Um, and then I'm going to do this two ways. Um, I'm going to hit the alpha y equals menu. Um, this is fraction, decimal, decimal fraction. So we're going to hit number 4. It knows which it is. It knows it's already a fraction, so it's going to go ahead and give it to us as a decimal. So this is going to be 3.25. Um, probably the best way to do this would just be say, say, hey, you know what? That 3 is the whole number. The 1 fourth is going to be 1 divided by 4. Common fraction, common rational number, we probably ought to know that. You might recognize this one right here. Um, this is the decimal 0.875. So um, we're going to do this. We're going to do 0.875. And then I'm going to hit the math button for this one. I want to change that to a fraction. And let's see if it does it here. Yep, 7 eighths. That's the right answer here, 7 eighths. You might recognize that one uh, from uh, maybe seventh grade. You memorized that. And then we get this interesting thing right here. So this is a 7 that repeats here. So there is a way to make the calculator do this. And this is a really fancy thing uh, with these new calculators. So what you need to do is you need to fill the entire screen. Make sure it's all that repeating pattern. It was, if it was repeating 7, 9, 7, 9, 7, 9, you'd fill the entire screen with 7, 9s. And then we're going to do math. And we want to change this. It was a decimal, so we want to change it to a fraction. And let's see if it does it. Oh, there we go. So this is 16 ninths. So negative. 16 ninths, and I'll go ahead and circle that right there. And just for the heck of it, um, let's do this. Let's have it change it back to a decimal. There we go. OK. And one more confirmation, negative 16 divided by 9. There you go. OK, so negative 16 ninths it is. OK, and then 11 fifths, um, or sorry, 11.5. You might know that this is 11 and a half. So if we were to just write this as 11 and 1 half and then change this from a mixed number to an improper fraction, uh, 2 times 11 is 22 plus 1. So this would be 23 halves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do 11.5. We'll hit the math button. We want to change that to a fraction. And there's our 23 halves. OK, so we're all set to go. Now, on the bottom of this page, so after a little bit of practice right there, it says evaluate these expressions using a calculator. Um, we are going to be throwing these in the calculator. Oh, I need to bump that over just a little bit. Um, to add and subtract fractions, if you were doing this by hand, here's what you'd have to do. You'd have to make them improper fractions. Then you'd have to make the denominators the same by making them have the same factors in the denominator. It's a really complex process to add and subtract fractions, especially when they um, and they get kind of kind of ugly and big. So we make them have the same factors. And if we were multiplying fractions by hand, we make them improper fractions, and then we, we multiply straight across. And if we're going to divide fractions by hand, remember, we never really divide fractions. We always make them improper fractions. Then we flip the second one over, and we multiply. So another way that we could talk about that is we could say that we, um, we multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply. OK? So let's go ahead and throw these in the calculator. Um, so again, really careful with these. We've got some fractions here. We've got uh, more fractions here. So these are, these are kind of a mess to put in here. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to clear this off so I can start fresh. I'm going to hit alpha y equals. I've got a mixed number, so I hit number 2. We're going to do 3 and 1 fourth. Then I'm going to come over here. I need to add. And because we can't have these two symbols next to each other, that one must be a minus, or sorry, a negative. So let's put a negative right here. And then again, we're going to put in a fraction. And we're going to do 5 over 6. Hop out on the end here. Make sure what's on your screen is what's on the paper. Hit Enter, and we get 29 twelfths. So I'm going to do 29 twelfths. Circle that, and we're done. 
Um, some of you that are thinking ahead, you might remember that we could do um, a positive times a negative, and we could have just done a minus right here. That would have given us the same type of answer here. And we do normally leave them as improper fractions. We don't change them to mixed numbers like we would in elementary school. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. This would be um, negative, and I'm going to hit alpha. Uh, we're going to do number one there, one on top two on the bottom. You'll notice that it's okay to have the negative out front or on top. Either one is fine. Then we're going to subtract. Um, I'm going to do 10 and we're going to hit, uh, let's see, second, or sorry, alpha y equals. Notice that I had the 10 there. It automatically knows that it needs to put it in the numerator. Put the third there, hop out on the end, take a good look. Is it the same thing? It is. So we get negative 23, 6, negative 23, 6. Um, and sometimes you might want to think about whether or not it would be easier just to do this by hand because definitely sometimes it is. So let's take a look at this one. Um, we're going to do 2, put in a fraction, sevenths. We're going to times that by, I'm just going to hit times instead of using the parentheses. Then I'm going to do a negative and we're going to do alpha fraction, 2 on the top, 5 on the bottom. Hop on the end there, it looks right. Now, we get negative, negative 4 35ths, and this is what I'm talking about. There are times where it's actually going to be easier and quicker just to do it in your head, do it by hand, because this is 2 times 2 is 4, positive times negative is a negative, 7 times 5 is 35. There's the answer sitting right there. Um, we could do the same thing on this one, like on this one we'd have to change this to uh, an improper fraction. So we get uh, 8 times 5 is 40 plus 1, so this is 41 eighths. We're then going to flip this one over. This is going to be 10 over 3. And then we could do some cross cancellation. Let's see what we get here. That's going to be a 4, and that's going to be a 5. So here's what I'm predicting. I am predicting 205 over negative 12. Um, and these don't have anything com in common, so I'm thinking that's the right answer. I hope I don't get embarrassed here. So let's do 5. And we're going to do alpha y equals, we're going to do a 2. So notice that it puts that right in front there. So we've got a 1 on the top. We've got a 8 on the bottom. We're going to divide by negative alpha y equals. It's just a regular old fraction. We've got 3 on the top and 10 on the bottom. Hop out on the end. Does it look like we have right here? It does. Hit enter. And look at that, uh, negative 205 over 12. Now, the only difference is where the negative is, but of course, uh, we could leave it on the bottom or move it out front or uh, on the top. So, uh, good shape there. Um, now, let's take a look at some of these other ones here. It says, evaluate the expression using a calculator. So, this is literally just going to be throwing these things in the calculator. One thing I quickly want to mention here is you can get some weird answers on the calculator if it's not in the correct mode. If you've reset the calculator, it will be in the correct mode already. I'm just going to double check this and you can do the same thing here. You'll notice um, that, that all of these on the left hand side are highlighted. On this one right here, it's not. So we would have to come over here and highlight there. So let me show you what would happen with this. Um, you can either reset the calculator, or if that one was highlighted, all we do is we come over here, hop on the one that we need, and hit enter. And now all of those are highlighted. Okay, so um, we're in the right mode. So again, I get out, uh, out of this, get back to the home screen by hitting second quit. I'm going to clear this off, and we're just going to go ahead and type these in. And I'm going to do this fairly quickly, so uh, try and keep pace here. So we're going to do 6 plus 21 divided by 7. We should know that we do the division first, so should have some idea what the answer is. The answer on this one's 9, and that is correct. Next one, we're going to do 63 divided by 21 plus 11 times. And again, that dot right there, we recognize that as multiplication, so let's multi put that in as multiplication. So we get 223. And again, it might not be a bad idea to kind of pause this and make sure that you're getting them right, and then you can kind of double check me as I uh, go through and put these in. So we're going to hit divide by 4, close the parentheses. I'm just going to hit the squaring button right there. And then we add 8 minus 3 times 5. Again, double check and make sure that what's on the screen matches what's on your paper. Got 114 there. And then this one right here. Now notice that I've got an asterisk on this one. So one thing I want to make sure everybody is aware of the, is that almost every single rule has an exception. And the fraction bar 
is an exception to that whole division thing. We don't do that type of division before anything else. So the fraction bar breaks the problem into the top and a bottom. Okay, so there are a couple different ways to do this. The way you should think of this is we basically need to find the answer for the top, find the answer for the bottom, and then do the division that's represented. We actually do this type of division very last because a horizontal uh, bar in math is a grouping symbol. So the top is grouped together and the bottom is grouped together. So that's one way to do it. The other thing that we could do is we could put parentheses, parentheses, make sure I spell that correctly and make it look nice, parentheses, around the top and parentheses around the bottom um, in order to make the calculator do it correctly. And then the other thing that you could do is you could put it in as a fraction and put this big ugly mess on the top and the 16 on the bottom. Now, any of those are fine, whichever one makes you feel comfortable. I've got a couple here. I'll probably do them a few different ways. I do want to ask this, though. What gives you permission to write the answer as a decimal? So when we go through, we're going to get some fraction answers. We're going to get some decimal answers. The thing that gives you permission to write the answer as a decimal is the problem is written with decimals. If the problem's written with decimals, then you can go ahead and write the answer as a decimal. Otherwise, you're going to need to write it as, a, as an integer or as a, as a reduced fraction. So let's go ahead and put this one in right here. I'm going to do this. This is, this is the way I like to do things. Um, this is my favorite way is to put these in parentheses. So we're going to do 4 plus 8, and then we're going to do times. I'll go ahead and put that on there, even though it would know uh, implied multiplication. 5 minus 3. Now, I need to do a double set of parentheses. Notice that I opened it twice, and I need to close it twice. Then we're going to divide that by 16. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. And this is, gosh, there are no decimals on this, so I better not write it this way. So let's go ahead and use, whoops, let's go ahead and use the math menu to change that to a fraction. And it's going to change that to 5 fourths. So 5 fourths is the answer here. Now, just for the heck of it, I'm going to do this another way. I'm going to just put this in as a fraction and see if it can help us out there. So I'm going to put in a fraction. So the top is going to be this, 4 plus 8 times parentheses, 5 minus 3, close the parentheses, whoops, parentheses, there we go. Hop down on the bottom, put a 16 on the bottom, hop out on the end there. Again, if you hop out on the end, you can kind of make sure that everything looks right. So I'm going to hit enter. Five fourths, we got the right answer. Now I am going to hit second enter and I'm going to recall that because I want to go in here and I want to edit one thing. I want to show you that we could have left something off. So I'm going to delete the uh, multiplication. It knows what implied multiplication is. So I'm going to hop out here on the very end. Looks exactly like it does on there. Same answer right there. Okay, let's do this one on the end here. Um, square brackets and parentheses, same thing. You can, like I did on that last one, you can use multiple sets of parentheses as long as you open and close them correctly. So let's do parentheses, 10 minus parentheses, 3 squared. There's the square button right there. And then minus 5, close parentheses. Got that. And then we're going to add 6 to the third. So we got to use that caret key. Some of you might know one other way to do that one right there. And then we're going to divide by 2. Hop out on the end, make sure that all that's done correctly. You'll notice that we don't have any decimals. Or so don't have any, uh, yeah, don't have any decimals. So we need to write this answer as a fraction um, or as a whole number. It happens to be a whole number, um, 114. Now, total coincidence here. Didn't even realize that that was going to work out that way, but it, it does. Those happen to have the same answer. Um, and then same type of thing here. I'm going to do this one by putting these in parentheses. So I'm going to do parentheses, 6 minus 2, parentheses, 1 plus 1. Again, you might think about whether or not it would be a good idea to um, uh, do this by hand or on the calculator. I do need to put that square in there, then close the parentheses. And notice what this does. This is really a nice feature. This set of parentheses is a little smaller than that, other, that big outside set of parentheses. So then we're going to divide, and then we're going to do 12 divided by 2. Now, it's a little crazy to put 12 divided by 2 in the calculator because you know that's 6. If you wanted to do that, that would be fine. What you can't do is leave off either the big set of parentheses on the top or the big set of parentheses on the bottom. That's big trouble in the long run. Occasionally, you might get the same answer, but uh, in the long run, you probably ought to uh, do that the right way. Now, we end up with negative 0.3 repeated, which some of you might remember is negative 1 third. We're going to make the calculator give us that answer. So I'm going to hit math, change that to a fraction, and there we go, negative 1 third. Okay, so we're all set with that. I'm going to slide down here. 
and we're going to take a look at some of these. And it says round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. So we're being given permission um, to uh, to put these uh, in in decimal form, even if it, even if it wasn't written that way to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one right here. So I'm going to do parentheses 0.25 plus nine. Whoops plus 9.35, easy to recover from that mistake. And then we're gonna divide by 0.2, make sure everything looks right, that we've typed it in there the right way. So we get 48. So a little surprising that we have got these ugly decimals in here and yet we get a nice answer like that. Let's do this next one. Now you've seen square roots and cube roots before. Um, let's remember how to find those on the calculator. The square root button is right here. So here's what we do, we hit second and square. That's that uh, square root button right here. We're going to do a 17, hop outside, and then we're going to subtract. Now here's the cube root button. There are a couple different ways to do this, but the most common way is just hit the math button, and there it is right there, okay? Number four right here will do a cube root of, of whatever we've got here. Um, this one's a little more complicated. It will find other roots, but um, we're going to do number four here. So just hit number four, and we're going to do a 17. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to have you think about, is this answer going to be big, small? Is it going to be positive, negative? You know, what's it going to be? This is the square root of 17, so that's a little bit bigger than the square root of 16. 16 is a perfect square, so the square root of that would be a little bit more than 4. This is a cube root, okay? So this is going to be smaller than 4. In fact, it's probably going to be quite a bit smaller than 4. So we're going to take a number that's around 4, a little bigger than 4, and we're going to subtract something that's smaller than 4. So we expect to have a positive answer, and lo and behold, we do. And remember, round to the nearest hundredth. So hundredth place is right here. We look at the one. That's not enough to bump that up. So we're going to say this is 1.55. Now, it's not necessary to put the approximately equal to. If you want to, you can, but uh, it doesn't matter. You've already got the permission to, to write that down. Now, um, this one's a little bit unique because we've got this asterisk here. Um, so on here, it says answer minus negative the square root of 6 squared. So here's what we're going to do. Now remember, in order to produce that answer here, there are a couple different ways you can do it. You can actually put the, that in there, or we can just hit the fact that we're going to take the answer and we're going to subtract something. So I'm going to hit the minus button, and it automatically says, oh, they want to take the last answer and they want to subtract something. So I'm going to put subtract a minus, which you might recognize. We could change that to a plus. And then we're going to do the square root of 6. We're going to hop outside, and then we're going to square that. Now, it might not be a bad idea to put this in parentheses, but you'll notice that this on the screen looks exactly like we've got on the paper, so we're in pretty good shape. Let's go ahead and hit Enter, and we end up with 7.55. We would round that. Now, one other reason why I've got an asterisk on this is if you did something else in between, that last answer might not be 1.55, and we're going we're gonna to do something uh, like this in just a second so you can see that it only stores the very last answer. So uh, that's the only time you'd want to use that is if you know the very last answer is the one that you're using in that next problem. Okay, let's take a look at this one. We'll do the square root of negative 4. So square root, do a negative 4, hop on the outside. It looks good. Oh, it says quit. We've got an error, non-real answer. Now, some of you might have a sense of, of why that might be, but we don't get an answer here, okay? So we're just going to write no answer, no A-N-S. Okay, let me make my N look right. No answer on that one. We'll talk later uh, this year about why that happens to be. Again, get back to the home screen by hitting second uh, mode, so quit. I'm going to clear all this stuff off. And then it says, use deep recall feature, uh, second and then enter to recall the last five entries on your calculator. Stop on the fifth one and have your calculator compute the answer again. Compare your answer with your neighbor. That might be the same, it might be different. So here's one way to do this. Second enter, there's one. Second enter, there's two. Second enter, there's three. Second enter, there's four. Second enter, there's five. This is, this is the last one. This is the, the fifth one, fifth command I typed into the calculator. Um, yours may be different depending on what happened there. So it's going to take this and it's going to say, okay, take that last, last answer and make it a fraction. So look at that, my gosh, that ugly mess right there. Okay, your answer might be different depending on which one you grab there. So one way to do it is just use the second enter, which it works, works really quickly for those of you that with really quick thumbs. You can have one thumb on the second and one thumb on the enter and you go really quickly. The other way to do it is to do this. You can literally just go back up here, find the one you want. So let's say we go back up in the room, like, hey, I used that one a while ago. Oh, there it is. And then you can hit enter, and what it will do is it will bring that down and make it so that you can edit it. 
okay? So I'm gonna hop on the end here and just have this calculate that, okay? So same thing there. All right, that's the bulk of what you need in order to do today's assignment. Um, I am gonna just do a really quick review if you wanna watch how to uh, do the, the graphing on the calculator. So um, we use the Y equals menu, and then we usually graph things in the standard window. We do that by hitting zoom six. Um, and we wanna make sure that there aren't any stat plots on because that can really mess things up. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna clear this off. We're gonna hit Y equals. You'll notice that there are no plots on right there. Um, and then we're all set to go. So let's go ahead and put this one in. So this is Y equals X. So this is the first uh, Y equation. So I'm just gonna hit an X, X is right there. Um, and then we're gonna hit zoom. And zoom six is the standard window. Okay, and there it is. That's, it's literally that simple. We wanna make sure that it looks like this and then we'll type those in there. So I'm gonna go back to the Y equals menu. I'm gonna change that to negative three X. There's the X minus one. Um, I'm gonna hit graph. Notice that it's already the standard window. We would expect this to cross at negative one about right there and have a slope of negative three. So that looks good. We'll do a couple more quick ones. I'm gonna go here and we're gonna do um, two divided by five put an X right there and then plus four. Um, now, I know this doesn't look quite the same. I didn't put it in as a fraction. The calculator knows how to deal with that and it's gonna be just fine. We're looking for something that crosses at four and has a slope of positive two fifths. So we're in good shape there. If you wanted to put that in as a fraction, that would be fine. I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna clear this off. Notice how the clear button works there. Um, and I'm gonna, just gonna put this one in. That is negative five. It's not a minus five. Uh, not a subtract five, it's a negative five. And I want you to think about what that looks like. So hopefully you remember from uh, years past what that will look like. That is going to be a horizontal line at y equals negative five, and there it is right there. Before I turn you loose, I do wanna take one quick second and talk about that math button that's on the calculator that might come in really handy. So we've got this all done, we've taken a look at the graphs and everything, but I wanna take a look at problems like this. Let's say you had to find the absolute value of something. Now we know absolute value is the distance from zero, so each one of these is pretty easy. So this one right here would be the absolute value of negative 25. How far is negative 25 from zero? It's 25 from zero. How far is nine from zero? It's nine from zero. And when you have a problem like this, we've got to do, it kind of acts like the parentheses here. So we've got to figure out what the answer is inside here. We don't just make each one of these positive. We've got to figure out what the number is here. So this would be 12 minus 19. This would be negative seven. That's an absolute value. And then how far is negative seven from zero? it's seven units from zero. Now on the calculator, take a look here. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff on here. Now, if we were to kind of slide through this math menu, you see each one of those roots and you see some maxes and mins and some weird stuff right here. Crazy stuff down toward the bottom, but take a look. Don't forget these other guys right here. In fact, I'm gonna take a look at this one on the end, the probability you might remember using rand and rand integer um, in seventh and eighth grade. Um, these ones are pretty crazy. Those are complex numbers. We won't worry about those, but I want you to take a look at this one right here. There's a couple cool parts in here, and the very first one, the most often used one, is ABS, and that stands for absolute value. So here's, here's how awesome your calculators are. Let's go to math, and then we'll hit the number, so the second one right here, and we're gonna grab absolute value. Notice that it grabs the absolute value bars. We're gonna type in negative 25, hop on the outside, and look what the answer is. Same thing here, we're gonna hit math, we're gonna go over to number, very first thing. So we're gonna hit either one or we can hit enter, it doesn't matter which. And we're gonna do a nine, hop on the outside, make sure that it looks right. There's the answer right there. And again, the cool thing about this, again, math, we're gonna slide over here to number, hit the number one or hit enter. We can actually type in problems inside the absolute value and it will figure those out. So it's not gonna do this step right here that we did. It, it's actually just gonna spit out the answer of seven right away. And there it is. Okay. Uh, rate yourself on a scale of one to four, how you feel about using a graphing calculator in the order of operations, um, because we need to be really good at using these calculators. All right, good luck with the assignment.